story thirteen of the bet and other stories by anton chekhov this librivox recording is in the public domain story thirteen old age state councillor uzikov architect arrived in his native town where he had been summoned to restore the cemetery church he was born in the town he had grown up and been married there and yet when he got out of the train he hardly recognized it everything was changed for instance eighteen years ago when he left the town to settle in petersburg where the railway station is now boys used to hunt for marmots now as you come into the high street there is a four-storied hotel vienna with apartments where there was of old an ugly grey fence but not the fence or the houses or anything had changed so much as the people questioning the hall porter Uzilkov discovered that more than half of the people he remembered were dead or paupers or forgotten do you remember Uzilkov? he asked the porter Uzilkov, the architect who divorced his wife he had a house in shrivbev street surely you remember no i don't remember any one of the name why it's impossible not to remember it was an exciting case all the cabmen knew even try to remember his divorce was managed by the attorney shapkin the swindler the notorious sharper the man who was thrashed at the dub you mean ivan nikhailovich yes is he alive dead thank heaven his honour's alive his honour's a notary now with an office well to do two houses in kapichny street just lately married his daughter off Uzilkov strode from one corner of the room to another an idea flashed into his mind from boredom he decided to see shapkin it was afternoon when he left the hotel and quietly walked to kirpichny street he found shapkin in his office and hardly recognized him from the well-built alert attorney with a quick impudent perpetually tipsy expression shapkin had become a modest grey-haired shrunken old man you don't recognize me you have forgotten Uzilkev began i'm your old client Uzilkev. Uzilkov? which Uzilkov? ah remembrance came to shapkin he recognized him and was confused began exclamations questions recollections oh never expected never thought chuckled shapkin what will you have would you like champagne perhaps you'd like oysters my dear man what a lot of money i got out of you in the old days so much that i can't think what i ought to stand you please don't trouble said Uzilkov. i haven't time i must go to the cemetery and examine the church i have a commission splendid we'll have something to eat and a drink and go together i've got some splendid horses i'll take you there and introduce you to the churchwarden i'll fix up everything but what's the matter my dearest man you're not avoiding me not afraid please sit nearer there's nothing to be afraid of now long ago i really was pretty sharp a bit of a rogue but now i'm quieter than water humbler than grass i've grown old got a family there are children time to die the friends had something to eat and drink and went in a coach and pair to the cemetery yes it was a good time shapkin was reminiscent sitting in the sledge i remember but i simply can't believe it do you remember how you divorced your wife it's almost twenty years ago and you've probably forgotten everything but i remember it as though i conducted the petition yesterday my god how rotten i was then i was a smart casuistical devil full of sharp practice and devilry and i used to run into some pretty shady affairs particularly when there was a good fee as in your case for instance what was it you paid me then five six hundred enough to upset anybody by the time you left for petersburg you'd left the whole affair completely in my hands do what you like and your former wife sophia mikhailovna though she did come from a merchant family was proud and selfish to bribe her to take the guilt on herself was difficult extremely difficult i used to come to her for a business talk and when she saw me she would say to her maid masha surely i told you i wasn't at home to scoundrels i tried one way and then another wrote letters to her tried to meet her accidentally no good 
i had to work through a third person for a long time i had trouble with her and she only yielded when you agreed to give her ten thousand she could not stand out against ten thousand she succumbed she began to weep spat in my face but she yielded and took the guilt on herself if i remember it was fifteen not ten thousand she took from me said uzilkov ah uh, yes of course fifteen my mistake shapkin was disconcerted anyway it's all past and done with now why shouldn't i confess frankly ten i gave to her and the remaining five i bargained out of you for my own share i deceived both of you it's all past why be ashamed of it and who else was there to take from boris petrovich if not from you i ask you you were rich and well-to-do you married in caprice you were divorced in caprice you were making a fortune i remember you got twenty thousand out of a single contract whom was i to tap if not you and i must confess i was tortured by envy if you got hold of a nice lot of money people would take off their hats to you but the same people would beat me for shillings and smack my face in the club but why recall it it's time to forget uh, tell me please how did sophia mikhailovna live afterwards with her ten thousand on a peu plus badly god knows whether it was frenzy or pride and conscience that tortured her because she had sold herself for money or perhaps she loved you but she took to drink you know she received the money and began to gad about with officers and troikas drunkenness philandering debauchery she would come into a tavern with an officer and instead of port or a light wine she would drink the strongest cognac to drive her into a frenzy yes she was eccentric i suffered enough with her she would take offence at some trifle and then get nervous and what happened afterwards well a week passed a fortnight i was sitting at home writing suddenly the door opened and she comes in take your cursed money she said and threw the parcel in my face she could not resist it five hundred were missing she had only got rid of five hundred and what did you do with the money oh it's all past and done with what's the good of concealing it i certainly took it what are you staring at me like that for wait for the sequel it's a complete novel the sickness of a soul two months passed by one night i came home drunk in a wicked mood i turned on the light and saw sophia mikhailovna sitting on my sofa drunk too wandering a bit with something savage in her face as if she had just escaped from the madhouse give me my money back she said i've changed my mind if i'm going to the dogs i want to go madly passionately make haste you scoundrel give me the money how indecent it was and you did you give it her i remember i gave her ten roubles oh is it possible usilka frowned if you couldn't do it yourself or you didn't want to you could have written to me and i didn't know i didn't know my dear man why should i write when she wrote herself afterwards when she was in hospital i was so taken up with the new marriage that i paid no attention to letters but you were an outsider you had no antagonism to sophia mikhailovna why didn't you help her we can't judge by our present standards boris petrovich now we think in this way but then we thought quite differently now i might perhaps give her a thousand roubles but then even ten roubles she didn't get them for nothing it's a terrible story it's time to forget but here you are the sledge stopped at the churchyard gate usilkov and shapkin got out of the sledge went through the gate and walked along a long broad avenue the bare cherry trees the acacias the grey crosses and monuments sparkled with hoar-frost in each flake of snow the bright sunny day was reflected there was the smell you find in all cemeteries of incense and fresh dug earth you have a beautiful cemetery said usilkov it's almost an orchard yes but it's a pity the thieves steal the monuments look there behind that cast-iron memorial on the right sophia mikhailovna is buried would you like to see the friends turned to the right stepping in deep snow towards the cast-iron memorial 
down here said shapkin pointing to a little stone of white marble some subaltern or other put up the monument on her grave usilkov slowly took off his hat and showed his bald pate to the snow eyeing him shapkin also took off his hat and another baldness shone beneath the sun the silence round about was like the tomb as though the air were dead too the friends looked at the stone silent thinking she is asleep shapkin broke the silence and she cares very little that she took the guilt upon herself and drank cognac confess boris petrovitch what asked Uzilkov sternly that however loathsome the past may be it's better than this and shapkin pointed to his grey hairs in the old days i did not even think of death if i'd met her i would have circumvented her but now well now sadness took hold of usilkov suddenly he wanted to cry passionately as he once desired to love and he felt that these tears would be exquisite refreshing moisture came out of his eyes and a lump rose in his throat but shapkin was standing by his side and usilkov felt ashamed of his weakness before a witness he turned back quickly and walked toward the church two hours later having arranged with the churchwarden and examined the church he seized the opportunity while shapkin was talking away to the priest and ran to shed a tear he walked to the stone surreptitiously with stealthy steps looking round all the time the little white monument stared at him absently so sadly and innocently as though a girl and not a wanton divorcee were beneath if i could weep could weep thought usilkov but the moment for weeping had been lost though the old man managed to make his eyes shine and tried to bring himself to the right pitch the tears did not flow and the lump did not rise in his throat after waiting for about ten minutes, Uzilkov waved his arm and went to look for Shapkin. End of story thirteen. End of the Bet and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov, translated by S. S. Kotiliansky and others.